Hi everyone, so I just wanted to put in an update. This is day, um, when did I start it? Day four, <laughs> I think this is day four. And I've not stitched on anything else. Um, and I've spent most every evening on it. Yeah, a little bit before work. Sometimes a little bit of lunch if I can. A little bit at lunch if I can. Um, yeah so i'm currently on this color which one can i show you it's this dark blue where the corner's just pointing um it is a gloriana silk Whee. it is in slate blue and I think when I put this on the video a while ago, it was kind of blue, very blue. And you can see now when I said in the video, it's quite teal colored. I mean, it's, it really is tealy, tealy blue, um, but far more teal, really, teal, teal really. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Nothing knots, nothing knots with silks. It's just incredible. So I'm working down this bit now. Um, where's my pointy thing? Let's use this. Uh, working down down the side. And um, I've done these kind of light coloured snowflakes and they're kind of yellow and green. Sort of, are they a bit pinky as well? I think maybe just yellowy and green, sort of light greeny. Light greeny blue, very, very light. Um, and then, I don't know if you can just about see where I'm pointing there. There's some blue in here and just around the inside of the sort of middle of the circle and then to each side on the outside here and here and it is pretty much exactly they're a little bit in real life they're a little bit darker than the fabric color but i mean blink and you'll miss them frankly so as i'm stitching i'm trying to make sure that i'm leaving gaps for beads so for instance this one here and this one here is a gap for a bead and i'm just having that i'm having to stare at it and think is that right? <laughs> Have I done it right? Where's the gap? Um, so yeah, I'll be glad when I'm away from these blue bits. Um, I do have the usage, the floss usage upstairs on my computer. So I might have a look just to see how many, how many, does it say how many stitches? I oh, know I might have made that up. It, um, but I might be able to find it in the rest of the pattern. Not that it really matters. I've got to stitch it no matter what now. So, um, but I don't think it's on the outside of anything, so I don't think it's going to blend in with the fabric too much. Anyway, um, so I'm currently working on this side. I have worked on the other side, but I'll just pull back really slowly and just see if I can get it all in. There we go. Yeah, it's so cool. So in terms of this Gloriana silk that I'm doing now, I have gone all the way from um, here. I've done all of this. And yeah, all around. So that's all done, really. Um, a little bit more in there, of course. Um, there's a dead straight line on the other side which is for, I think, a sort of dark red colour. Not not sure. Um, I'm using the coloured uh, pattern, which I saw in the Facebook group. People said it's, um, it's supposed to replicate roughly what the colours of the threads are. I think it's pretty good at the moment. Actually, it might be. I think it's like a really deep purple as opposed to a deep red. Um, but I'm not sure. Not sure. It could be a variegated dark one. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm obviously absolutely loving it. Um, late last night, I did the beading. If 
for, I went back and did the beading for part one because I had enough stuff. And today my blue Nymo invisible thread came. It's not invisible if it's blue, but it's blue coloured. Have I got it with me? Um, oh yeah, hang on. And yeah, I got I went a bit nuts on doing some shopping the other day and that came today. So these are John James size 10 beading needles. These are <laughs> hemline, oh, you can just about see the label sticking out the wrong, uh, hemline hand needles size 10 to 15. I'm actually using, oh, I don't know what I've done with it now, uh, I'm using a beading needle that came in my Mill Hill kit, which was absolutely fine. I might, these look, these are quite long, um, and I think, I'm not sure a long bead is what I would find easy. I'm going to try it because I won't know until I try it. But I feel like a short, I feel like a shorter needle. These are shorter. I feel like a shorter needle would be better. Again, see what happens. Uh, and then this is my blue Nymo invisible thread. Or would you just call it Nymo thread? Um, it's tiny little reel I bought more than one and then I obviously realized I don't need I probably won't need anywhere near even just one or even probably half one the thread is so thin um, it's ridiculous um, but I did buy more than one uh, it looks very blue in comparison to this blue that looks quite bright blue compared to this sort of gray blue but actually when I look at them they're pretty much the same color um, yeah, from, I'm just, I'm just looking around the side of the corner. They really are pretty much the same color. So, um, I'm excited to get into those. Did anything else arrive today? No, that's about it. I think that's all I need. Uh, so yeah, the plan is just to keep working through with this, um, Gloriana slate blue, and that fills as you can see all the way around the whole thing um and then there's yeah there's these other couple of colors in here i don't think there's any oh yeah and there's specialty threads specialty th specialty stitches in every single one of these little gaps here um so yeah i'm gonna do those after i've done the cross stitching and then the beading and then i'll probably do this dark border oh no i'm supposed to do that first aren't i i'll do the dark border before i do the beading uh, one last thing before i go i wanted to say thank you to everybody who replied to my story um and messaged me about which th threads they use um and particular thanks go to uh lisa cross stitch midwife who was and always is super helpful and um Morty from Mad Morty who uh, suggested that I could try spellbound beads, spellbound beads, um, to try these coloured Nymos. I hadn't found, I hadn't been able to find a blue one, and she mentioned spellbound, and I uh, ordered them, and they came like nearly the next day. Um, so thank you, for Morty, for that one, and also to Eve, who messaged me and kind of gave me some advice on how and when to knot the invisible thread on the back um, and the advice was fantastic absolutely fantastic so I did that and also then to Teresa who um, ties her invisible thread to the eye of the needle so that it doesn't sort of slide about and I hadn't realized how crucial that was until I started doing it and then realized how slippery the thread is <laughs> Oh dear, not only that, I can barely even see it. So the combination of that is, um, uh, means that advice of that nature is really helpful. <laughs> uh, so yes, thank you everybody who commented, um, not who commented, who messaged me with some uh, advice and info. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, uh, I managed to get some beading done. And it's, it's, was not as intimidating as I thought it was going to be and I think that's because of this wonderful stitching community 
with all the information that you could possibly need is somewhere on here or somewhere in your brains and uh, thank you for sharing it I really appreciate it okay bye hi everybody I just wanted to do a quick update um, this is day six of the Chatelaine um, this is the center motif here and then part one is this pink section to the end of this bluey section so I'm just going to um, slowly move the camera so you can get a slightly better shot of the whole thing so far um, I've pulled the thread out so I can show you it in a second I've just got um, strips of this new color just to go all the way around the um, outside of the square sections um, that's the last bit of stitching that is in this piece it's taken me about two and a half days to do this dark blue color um, stitching around everything because I'm leaving gaps all over the place for beads tiny little gaps in there for the beads so um, yeah it's been um, one I have to count and concentrate on <laughs> and then this evening um, during a lovely stitchy call I've put in this um, brighter color all the way around the outside um, so as I said I've just got one dark colour now to go all the way around the outside of oh, just these long bits sorry not not here um, then I've got some specialty stitches in each of these gaps here with the pink stitches then I've got some treasure braid to go in these little corner bits then there's lots of different beads I'm not actually sure what colour they are but there's loads of spaces for beads and then I think these bigger blocks and these bigger blocks are for bigger crystals I think I'll find out when I get there. Um, so the colour I'm about to start working on is a Karen Water Lilies. It's called Sable. Um, and ooh, if you watch my video about my supplies, I showed this one and just said just how beautiful it is. And I, it's so soft. I can't I can't tell you, but it's such a cool colour co or collection of colours. Um, I'm really excited to stitch on this one. So I'll update again once I've finished all the, stitch, uh, all the cross stitching. And uh, yeah, see you in a bit. Bye. Hello everybody. It is, oh, clearly this is the first time I've spoken today. <clears throat> first thing Saturday morning, uh, on a Saturday morning. Uh, I've just finished all the cross stitching in this part one. Uh, so I just finished off this um, darker row all the way around the outside. Not this bit, Ooh, not this bit though. Um, and uh, this is in the colour Sable, which is a Karen Water Lily. It's absolutely beautiful. And I realised I put it onto a floss drop. Did I show you that yesterday? No, I put it onto a floss drop, like it's actual, the card that it comes on, I've used that as a floss drop. Um, and in the lengths that I've cut, the colour is it goes from brown but it's also got black in it <laughs> but I managed to just pull out a brown strand so it's pretty brown anyway uh, I'm now moving on to some sorry wobbling petite treasure braid there is one two three four four stitches in each corner here uh, and then I'm on to specialty stitches so I'll keep you updated bye hello everyone so um, apologies in advance if this bit wobbles um, because I'm zoomed in the tiniest amount, um, the tiniest about amount of movement looks huge. Um, so I'm just showing you, um, I'm on my last diamond eyelet as I'm going round and it's all a very good learning curve um, because I just, two things have happened that I've had to sort of think about differently. So it's really that's really cool, it's taxed my brain this morning. Um, but I was just going to show you how beautiful this petite treasure braid is. Kind of pinky green. It's fantastic. And this one is a kind of silvery... This is the one with the kind of dark grey, purpley, blue stuff. But I think it reflects on the colours around it. So when I take the camera out in a minute, it'll look very, uh, very pink. Because I remember thinking, I don't have a pink... When I looked at pictures of other people, so I thought, I haven't got a pink treasure braid. But um, it reflects so much off of these stitches. It's just amazing. Um, so, eyelet. So this is my last diamond. Oh, this is my last diamond eyelet. And on some of the ones at the top, I've had to re... I just... It's not that... I didn't 
so I did them correctly, but the way that I finished them off meant that they weren't brilliant. So the last, so these go in all these stitches around this little rectangle here. And then the last one goes in, oh, I'm doing this through the camera. It's really, really weird. Uh, the last one goes in here. And what I was, what I didn't realize I was doing till I'd done them. I, I'd done one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd done 12 absolutely fine. But I think it's about the way, that, the direction of travel. So if I finish this stitch, um, you're supposed to sort of pull tight and then you get this hole, whoops, which I've got there. But because I was traveling to the next one, so let's see if I can put my needle in here somewhere. Because I was traveling to the next one down over here, um, I was pulling this last thread across to travel. Um, to here or wherever in this eyelet. And so I was kind of closing the gap. I was kind of closing the hole. Um, do you see what I mean? It kind of, this thread just kind of, just kind of took out half the hole really of the eyelet. And it just wasn't, it just wasn't clear as opposed to if I was traveling upwards. So this way oh dear this is very zoomed in up this way instead then i would have closed the or rather i would have opened the eyelet properly but because i was going this way it was covering the hole as opposed to this way which is traveling in different directions so i've unpicked three of them and i stitched them just going going the other way really so if i zoom back out we Oh, I'm going to regret pulling that through, but um, instead of wait, let me focus. I know you can focus, it just doesn't want to. Well, it doesn't matter, we can see anyway. But instead of going um, this way, traveling this way, I changed, I unpicked these three or four, and I traveled this way, so from right to left instead which meant that every time I was um, going to zoom back in, which meant that every time I was doing the eyelet, I was pulling the thread away. So I was creating the hole in the fabric. So it looked really nicely. That's a really long winded. That's a really long winded um, explanation. It's still early. I've had coffee and everything, but it's still very early. OK, so that was the first thing. And then the second thing was that on this particular hole, the stitches on the back here were just um, kind of covering this hole. So every time I went in to try and create this, um, I was picking up some of these threads or whatever's on the back. So I've had to kind of do some work on the back just to loop whatever was covering this hole underneath and then sort of pull it out of the way. So I'll just pause and turn over and sort out. I've pulled my... I've pulled this through over from some random hole, so I need, just need to take that out. I won't be, I won't be a second. Okay, I'm back. So I've sorted out, <laughs> sorted out my thread. Um, so this is the last stitch. This is the back, obviously. Look at the mess. But um, this is the last stitch, so I'll be pulling the eyelet uh, hole this way, like this. But all of these, this sort of stuff here, um, where I've perhaps tied off. Well, there's a pink tail. And I've tied off some other bits. Um, there was quite a lot of stuff here. And so it was covering this hole. So I don't know if you can see this stitch, uh, this stitch, this stitch. There's a number of stitches here where I've just tried to kind of um, loop it around some of this stuff that was hiding or covering the hole on the back and then just sort of pull it out of the way. Um, so, yeah, now, now when I've done this eyelet stitch I've now got like a really clear hole and it fits uh, fits in with all of the other ones so that's that uh yes so I'll go back to the other side okay so that's all done and so this last eyelet here is now finished that's the last specialty stitch in this section so I'm going to zoom back out again properly Oh, 0 0.6, that might be why. Let's go with one. There we go. So, um, yeah, they're all done. All these specialty stitches in this section are done. 
Yippee! Oh, and I also did the petite treasure braid, which is these, oops, in each corner, there's just four stitches. Uh, one, two, three, four. And these actually took a little bit of time because I'm leaving these gaps to put in some crystals. I didn't want to carry this treasure braid all the way through because I don't think you'd see it. You've got to make a cross anyway to get the crystal in, but I just went around. So I just sort of traveled slightly. So I kept turning back and forth and just traveled slightly around the outside. Um, but that's it. So that's all the crosses. That's all the petite treasure braid. And that's all the specialty stitches. So, oh yeah. And by the way, I noticed I caught, I switched between special stitches, which is what it says in the pattern, specialty stitches, which I've heard people, and then speciality stitches. <laughs> and it's because where I work, there are some doctors and I've been there many years and no one can tell me if it's specialty stitches, specialty stitches, specialty doctors or speciality doctors. And I wonder if they're even the same thing. Anyway, so um, I'll call them all sorts of things in this. And if it's wrong, <laughs> it's just that it rolls off the tongue wrong. Uh, so apologies. <laughs> um, anyway, so yes, cross stitches are done. Treasure braids done. Specialty, special stitches, whatever, uh, are done. And so, yeah, it's just the beads now. Um, and then these big crystals that sit in here. So what I think I'm going to do... Oh, yeah, that, that, that's what I was going to say. There's a bead here and a bead here all the way around. Naturally, they're different colored beads. So what I'm going to do is um, do what I did with... Was it this? Oops. Yeah, with this, which is I had both colors of beads. Oh, no, maybe it was the blue. Oh, yeah, it was the blue and these gray ones. Um, have both of them on my little bead mat. And then work my way around. I'm going to create a little system, I think, which is um, just to have some little stickers and put them on my bead mat next to the colours, just so I don't get completely confused. But yeah, my plan is to do all of these in one thread because it just makes sense because they're so close. Anyway, I'm quite close now. Um, I just, I just love it. <laughs> I just, I just love it. I can't believe how quickly I've bashed through this. I mean, I can because I've spent hours on it, but it's amazing. It actually goes quite, it actually goes quite quickly. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Bye. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm about to start the beading on this um, part. Sorry if you can hear my dishwasher rumbling in the background. Um, I've been out today shopping um, and this is probably too much information for you all. But the funniest thing today was finding um, a can of WD-40 in the changing rooms of the bra shop that I went into. <laughs> Uh, I might edit this out, but actually it was too funny. So I think I'll probably leave it in. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, for those of you who don't know what WD-40 is, uh, it's a kind of lubricant that you would put on a rusty old hinge on a door. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, where was I? Right, so I'm doing beading uh, and I've ordered, and it has arrived, a tacky bill. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, move the camera. There we go. Adhesive bead bed. Um, and I'll come back in a second. I'll just take it out of its packaging. Here we go. It's a bit like a CD case. Um, it's got hinges on the side, but they don't look rusty to me. And um, when it's opened, it opens with this little clasp. There are two pages in here and they are really very sticky. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is put two different colours um, together, or probably on this side. Um, and my brain's quite good at number order, so um, I should hopefully be okay. Because all of the, all of the, um, where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, so the, the numbers of the 
What am I trying to say? The symbols for the beads are all the numbers. So it should be okay. And um, yeah, number nine is indeed the same as number three, in case anyone else has seen that as well. You can just about see the number nine under there by... It was so light that I wrote it in pencil, just in case. Um, okay, so see you in a bit. Bye! I thought I would do a bit of an evening update. Um, so I've gotten, gotten, I've got all the um, beads done around this pink section here. And they are, it's quite consistent. So once you kind of get, once you know what colour you're doing where, it's quite consistent and just sort of doing it. So these ones at the top of this section are all one colour and then everything else is this sort of clear colour, which actually is the same as wee, that one, um, but it's showing, so it's showing white, but yeah, they're clear and white. Uh, so I've done those. Um, I started using, what have I done with it? I started using the blue... <laughs> I couldn't work out where the camera was then. The blue Nymo thread, well, sorry, which is the same colour as the fabric, really. Um, this is super thick in comparison to the Hemline Invisible Thread. I'll put it down there, that I'm using instead. Um, because, sorry, it's got this little casing on it that keeps it all, um, keeps it all in place. It's really cool. But uh, I can't do this with my with one hand at the moment, so I'll do it another time. But um, yeah, I decided. So I stitched some of them with this blue Nymo, and they weren't quite sitting flat properly. Um, that's not true. They were sitting flat, but they were sitting slightly at an angle, only slightly, very very slightly at an angle. Um, and I hadn't done a huge amount of them. I'd done sort of this many going across here. And I just decided, I just, I just decided to change my mind. So I actually took it all out. I went back to this, um, this invisible thread, and it's very, very thin and very shiny, and, um, but I find it ties to the eye of the needle quite nicely. I'll do this in another video another time, but um, you actually tie instead of putting the thread through the needle and then sort of having a tail because it's so wibbly wobbly um I tie the thread to the eye of the needle that's what I'm trying to say um and it's tricky with this fabric um with this thread but actually this um knots really nicely and it stay and the knots stay there whereas with the Nymo I think because it's just thicker it's just the nature of it it um it does sort of undo so I tied it twice to the needle and then every couple of stitches it was just it was just undoing um so I went back to the invisible thread anyway so I have done all of these around the pink section and then I started up here so I've got these kind of cream they're not they're not shiny they're in, they're very matte these ones but um these cream beads and then uh, the odd dark gray one up here and it wasn't until I came across and started um looking to put this one in at the top where am I here no here but I put it in and I realized I've missed a stitch. <laughs> I've missed a stitch above it. So so I when I got to the end of my thread, um I've just I'm gonna go back now and finish just get that stitch in before I forget. Um yeah. <laughs> so I've done a lot tonight, but I don't have much to show for it. Um but it's looking and it's looking absolutely stunning for it. So I'm going to keep going with these snowflakes. I, I really, really would like to finish this, uh, all the beads. Um, I wouldn't really have got to the big crystals yet. I might leave that for the morning, but if I can get the beading done today, that would be great before I go to bed. Although you can probably hear from my voice, it's quite late. Um, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Morning, everybody. Well, morning for me, not necessarily morning for you. 
Um, it is Sunday morning. I did not quite manage to get the beads done in this part last night, so I thought I'd do them this morning. In between having some coffee, I'll just pause and have some coffee now. Fabulous. If you can see, um, if you can hear uh, frothing in the background, that's my um, cappuccino kind of deflating. Um, it's funny how I perk up and my coffee deflates. Anyway, so I've got my, um, I'm going to, so I'm going to do some beading with you today. Uh, I've got my tacky bill and I've put some beads on it because what I want to do, because I've got eight coloured beads, the pattern calls for nine. Wait there, let me show you. I think I showed you yesterday. The pattern calls for nine. There's a really light coloured, light pink coloured um, nine there. I wrote, overwrote it on pencil because you couldn't really see it. But actually, number nine is the same colour as, as number three. So um, because there's nine, I feel like in this tacky bill, I can have... Um, oh, I'm just going to zoom back out. Whee! There we go. I feel like I can have nine colours on here in a number order and I'll know what they are. So this is one, two, three, four, five six seven eight and then i don't need or it need nine so um i feel like i can do that and i can remember what they are what i'm doing is i'm still getting the the little pot out we still getting the little pot out just to check am i doing the right one um which is fine um yeah i realized the benefits of being able to leave beads somewhere instead of sort of pouring them out all the time. I don't know. It's a system. It's a it's a it's a movable thing. So I'm I'm doing this. I might do something else later. This is what I'm doing now. Uh so for this section I'm using number two and just like a dark grey. Oh, will it focus? I'm sure it will. In a minute. That's like a dark grey shiny thing. And then this is a cream. I don't know why it's not focusing now. It's really annoying. Um yeah, like a cream matte colour. So I'm going to get on. Um, I'm not going to be talking through how I bead. I mean, obviously, you'll, it's a bead for me, so you'll you'll see. But I'm not going to talk through how I bead. What I'm going to do is link below Teresa Little Stitches um, Bead With Me video, which is where I picked up all the information about how to bead, um, which I think is really um really really helpful well it was incredibly helpful so I'm not going to talk through how I do it all I would say though is um that um what, what was the other bit oh yeah periodically as I'm going around if I've happened to pull a really really long strand of invisible thread then um Eve thank you very much you said to that it was it would be helpful to kind of tie a knot in the back um at sort of regular points so that if your thread broke, at least all your beads on that thread wouldn't end up sort of untangling or loosening. It would just perhaps be that little section. So I've been doing that because I think that's really helpful. Um, everything else is on Teresa's video. So I'm gonna link that below. Okay, so can you see? Yeah, if it's a bit wobbly, apologies. The camera is attached to a stand which is wobbling, so I'm not entirely sure what you'll see, but um, yeah, I'm going to do some beading now. Um, and these are my cream beads. Oh, it, this is so sticky. It's really funny. And I don't have the required nail <laughs> yet on this finger. It's not quite long enough to do it. So I'm a bit, I'm not, um, I'm not the most graceful in some of this stuff, I can assure you. But it, it is, it is what it is. It just gets done. Um, yeah, did I, yeah, it's fine. There's a bit of strategic kind of placement here in that you're kind of like, oh, which, where am I, where am I going next? I don't want to travel that much, but I do need to travel. So where am I, where am I traveling? It's quite exciting. Well, obviously it's not going to work, is it? If it's going to go into focus on my hand every time. I need to use my other camera, really. Mm, okay, I'm going to pause and then I'm going to thread my thread. 
under the back so that I'm not traveling. Actually, I changed my mind because I'm only going into the middle bit. So I don't actually need to um, travel that far. So I had a really un really interesting conversation with my mum yesterday. We went shopping and we came back and had a little chat and then we were sort of talking crafts and cross stitch. Um, actually we were talking crafts and then mum hasn't picked up a cross stitch for a really long time. <clears throat> and I occasionally mention it. She knows that I cross stitch. Ooh, she knows I cross stitch and I showed her my chatelaine yesterday and she was suitably impressed um, at the at the attempt and um, she loved the pattern of course and I kind of I don't like to mention it too much because <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm hounding her to get back into cross stitch but um, she let me just work out where I'm going <clears throat> excuse me Oh, I'm going here. She um, worked on a Teresa Wentzler. Oh, I've pulled my needle. It keeps tangling on my hand. There we go. Um, she's working on a Teresa. She was many, many years ago. I don't know. Like we're talking 15 years ago. Working on a Teresa Wentzler pattern, which is the peacock. And I'll actually put it in. I'll put a picture in. Um... And she's got, I don't know, maybe like a quarter, a quarter done. I'm just going to untangle my, un, unspin. That's not even a word. My needle on the back. Um, and I can't, we, I don't, I don't, I don't think either of us know why um, she stopped working on it. Anyway, we pulled it out of the cupboard, I don't know, last year or the year before. And there are some hoop marks and a bit of staining on the fabric, but it's one of those things that I think you probably just wouldn't probably just wouldn't even notice it at this point. Um, so I just kind of said yesterday, oh, when, when do you think you might get back to that peacock? <laughs> innocently, innocently suggested. And then, uh, and then she just said, yeah, I'd really like to do that, actually. I'd really like to finish that off, and I'd really like to do um, uh, these. I bought her these bookmarks. Sorry, I'm going to cough. They were William Morris related bookmarks and that I bought sort of these little kits that you can buy. Sorry, my hand actually stuck to the the bead back then. Um I she was like, I'd like to do those. And then she's got a frame upstairs um which doesn't have a picture in, and she said, Oh, I'd quite like to do a little oh she said I'd quite like to do a little cross stitch in there of, I don't know, a lake scene or something. So I immediately was like, quick, use the opportunity. So I got out Etsy, uh, got Etsy up on my phone and just sort of typed in ornament or small cross stitch pattern or whatever. Um, and there were a couple, we found a couple. Um, and then I said, oh, you know, the, the miniatures would be um, the miniature art that people design now would be really cool. So we started looking through those and um, I think we may have settled on Starry Night, but there's one in there that's kind of purpley, uh, purple at the bottom. So, and also, I mean, you know, you can kind of um, crop a little bit if it doesn't fit. So, I said, if she can give me the measurement of the gap in the frame, aperture in the frame, um, I can work it out. And then, let me just work out where I'm going over here. And then I said, oh, and I can work out, I need to work out what fabric you like, fabric count you use, because there's the peacock. I can go, I'm going to have to find wherever she's stored that now, and then try and find out what count she's working on and see if that's something we can do. And then I'll kind of 
pick the fabric or find some fabric in my stash, which I'll have loads, I've got loads of. Um, and then she said that she'd really like to work on that. Mum hasn't picked up cross stitch for a really, really long time, so I thought that was really cool. Um, and I've got from, um, oops, um, do you know, I think it might have been Gecko Rouge, or it could have been Lakeside Needlecraft. I'm really sorry, one of the shops, and I can't remember which one it was, sent me, I sort of emailed in and asked, and asked for it, and they sent me, or maybe I paid for it. If I'm honest, I can't remember now. This would have been about two, three years ago. Um, a little swatch pack of lots of different sized fabrics. So I think it started at 14 and ended at 25, I think. I don't, maybe 28, I can't remember. But um, it was a really cool little little pack. And so I said, well, I'll try, and, I'll try and pull that out so that I can... No, I didn't do that one very well. Uh, I'll try and pull that one out so that I can... You know... Um, so that mum can practice or just try out not practice but just try out different count different counts and and she hasn't stitched for a long time so see which is good for her eyes and things um so i was really chuffed with that yesterday <laughs> i've got to keep the momentum going um okay so that whole side is finished and i just i'm just checking out the two corner dark ones and then i've got five in each of these sections i always just like to check um so yeah i've just got the left hand side to go up now uh so i'm gonna tie off this thread and be back in a second okay i'm back so i've um tied on a new piece of thread and oh i picked up both beads <laughs> unnecessary Okay, I think you can still see. Uh, so yes, I'm really excited. I might be repeating myself now. I'm really excited that my mum is kind of, um, kind of having a, th a think about getting into cross, or well, you know, getting into cross stitch a bit. Again, I was really, um, I was really happy. Uh, mum's got a tapestry. When I was. I don't know if she started it before I was born even maybe, but it was this tapestry that was always it was always in the in the spare room. Um I don't uh, and it's on a it's on a scroll it's on a scroll frame. Uh yeah, I don't know. Late seventies, eighties? Well, for all I know, she started it when I was 10. I, so I, I don't know. But um, it was, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It's not completed, but um, it's one of those things where now I'm like, ooh, I might try and dig that out as well and see if we can. Although I don't think she'll, I don't think she'll ever go back to that. But you never know. If you ever watch this, mum, it would be amazing. <clears throat> It's got horses on it and carriages and I don't know, I find it I just find it magical when I was younger. Frankly still find it magical now. Am I going off camera a bit? No. Okay for two beads, I think. the needle on the back or oh, cut the thread on the back I do find myself tutting a lot I feel like there's a lot more to um well, definitely not the camera then I feel like there's a lot more to kind of get in the way and it's you can't really see the thread very well <laughs> so it can be in interesting right I need to move the camera up a second okay here we go i 
I'm going to have to refill my little pile of beads as well in a second. I've only got three left. Um, so for anyone working on a Chatelaine, do you find yourself trying trying to look up... So I'm obsessed at the moment, um, as Stitched by Lids would say, I'm obses obsessed by um, going into the Chatelaine support group face on Facebook and looking up kind of other people's finishes of this section and at the same time trying not to look ahead. I I mean I know what I know what's in the pattern. I I know obviously I'm I know I know what it's gonna look like but I don't know the individual details. So I like to I'm trying to not ow, not look ahead at what's coming. Obviously I failed failed dismally. So did you see what I did then? Did you see what I did? I pulled this thread of this cross stitch. Can you see? Where's the needle? Yeah, a bit. Um, because I caught the end of the needle in it. So to try and pull that down a bit, I don't know whether this will work. This is what I do in full coverages and stuff as well, if I get like a loose one, is I go up in the bottom the bottom I suppose if your cross is if your top leg is this direction, then I pick the I would pick the bottom. And I go under the top leg, and if this is standard stuff, then apologies. I sort of pull it so that that is now sort of looping around this bit of fabric. And then I go back down the same hole, and what you should do is just pull a little bit of the thread, the loose thread, back. And it has a little bit. Is that flat? Yeah, it's flattened a bit. Yeah. So I sometimes on a full coverage, I'll do it twice because it leaves a loop. A, it, it just gets that bit of extra thread to the back. I've just realised I've got no bees left. Um, so I, I'm going to check to make absolutely sure. Yeah, definitely this one. Hang on. Okay. Um, I've also ordered a, a little bead scoop, even though I don't need it really, because a tap of the finger is perfectly acceptable, but I don't know. I just felt like, I don't think you can have too many accessories, can you? I don't think that's a thing. Um, now I've just got to find the needle. And it's such a fine needle, I can barely find it. <laughs> Literally, there you go. Literally have to run my hand across it to see if I can find it um yeah and I just put that down with that bead on it so that's just silly um yes right going in There's, <laughs> there's so much to bash this morning. I've got my tacky bill to the side, camera above me. Right, that's okay. Potentially cat hair, I think that may have been. Right, I'm just going to pause and move the camera up again. Okay, I have no idea where I stopped. No idea where I stopped recording. But you're back now. Um, oh, I've got three beads to do, but I'm not sure this thread is long enough. We'll find out. Oh no, why is it cool? Oh, I'm holding the tail. Silly. Nope. Pull the needle, not the other bit. See, now I've got myself in a bit of a pickle. I have to say, after doing, even as I haven't even done that many in, in the world, in life, but after doing just the ones I've done over the last couple of days, I can, I can see kind of how to fix weird bits that happen. And sometimes it's just really confusing sort of where the thread is. But I'm gradually learning how to 
fix little weird bits that happen. I need to spin my needle underneath anyway. Sometimes I can't see what I'm doing and I just think, oh, just go for it. Just pull it, it'll be fine. <laughs> and it, it actually isn't too bad. Right, last, last one. I'm just going to check. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then a corner one. Yeah. I have to bring the, bring the thing to me because I haven't got enough thread. But can I do it? Can I do it? Ow. Right, the tail is now longer than the bit of thread I've got left. So that's going to get right in the way. So I'm going to chop it off. And then I'm going to go for it. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent, Smithers. Right. So I'm just checking again. I've got the two corner ones. I've got five per kind of circular motif and a corner one at the top five 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 corner corner five 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 corner corner five 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 corner corner five five five, five. yeah just checked all the way around it's definitely right sorry if you were counting if you're stitching and you're counting oh how delightful the sections where these are that some of the some of it is blue but i think you would see the blue nymo thread if i you would see it more on here Whereas with the invisible thread, it is actually invisible, like magically invisible. You would see the blue Nymo thread, absolutely, um, which wouldn't be too bad if your bead is here against here. But also if you've got a light bead and you've got this sort of darker, it's not dark blue, but it's a noticeable blue thread coming out the side of it. So um, I might use it elsewhere if if it fits. But for now, I think the invisible thread is is just it's just perfect. OK, so all I've got left to do on this section now. Are these oh, my needles still stuck in the back? Um, are these crystal gaps here and here and here? What? And I think there's something in the instruction about going through it twice, going using the thread and crossing it twice in there. So I'm going to read that instructions and um, read those instructions and probably have a little a little look in the in the Facebook group and it is a support group my word <laughs> supported me a lot so far um so I shall be back uh in a bit okay I've been gone about half an hour probably more <laughs> probably more than half an hour trying to work out which crystal I'm supposed to use um the pattern, the PDF for Evening in the Park comes, there might be more, but I've got three on my Kindle kind of open. So one's a material, materials list, which is like a materials usage list. So it says how many skeins you need, how many, oh, I can't remember, I haven't got my Kindle in front of me, like yards and how many skeins you'll need over five yard and stuff. So that's the materials usage list. Then there's a separate PDF, which is a keys, like the symbol legend keys list which has all of the threads and the beads but doesn't have the crystals um listed and I thought I was going mad because you know when you think what am I missing it's got to be here somewhere this is crazy so then in the group I could see that one person had asked about this um the symbol that's going to go into these gaps here that I'm about to do and somebody had answered the question so I could have carried on with it but I thought no I need I need to know how people know <laughs> how people know about which one to use um and so I did a quick post in the group and honestly within five minutes two people had answered um and one of them said it's on page one in the materials list it's on page one of the of the instructions and I was like oh I don't I don't understand anyway so there's another materials list which has not got materials usage it's the free one that you can buy uh, it's the free one that's online that I've pointed to in my previous supplies video which is kind of written like this so it's just like a word document with boxes 
um, it's like this. Whereas the proper materials usage list is, is in my version is like peach and pink, peachy coloured. Um, so I didn't realise, I forgot that this is also right at the beginning of the instructions of the actual pattern. So like the 46 page pattern or something and if don't let that worry you because it's not you don't have to do 46 pages it's just that there's loads of different there's like a black and white copy um a colored copy like there's just loads of different so you don't have to actually work through 46 pages but there's just 46 pages in the pdf anyway the point is that the top two pages of that is this list again <laughs> which does have <laughs> the letters that correspond to the crystals I got there in the end. So that's been fun. Um, <laughs> so I know what I'm doing now. I don't know what I'm doing now. I haven't even worked out how to attach it. I've, I've just managed to work out what colour I need. Honestly. Right. Back in a bit. <laughs> okay, so I've just um, worked out how many I need. I've used uh, a little diamond tra diamond painting tray. Uh, and I'm going to try and find some diamond painting tweezers as well. Um, it's these light coloured light coloured ones that I need now. So I'm just going to take out a couple. And I'm going to do the same as I did um, with the beads. I'm just going to put them um, up here. I don't know if that's a sensible option. But uh, I'm going to have like A, B, C. And I know you're saying it in your head, but there is no D. It skips to another letter. Anyway, I'm not counting now. 10. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. Right, I need to try and do this without. Just do some crinkling and... Uh... Right, let's just pull them all pour them all out. Um look at this. Look at this, uh <laughs> these cubes. What how amazing. Oh my goodness. Ah, right. Um, I should have two of these spare. Uh, there's one. Oh, and there's the other. So I should. Oh, I didn't realise they were, were all kind of used in the same place. Yeah, I see the. I see the issue when they are clogging up. <laughs> They're clogging up the funnel, man. Come on, you can do it. They just need a bit. They just need a bit of encouragement. See, they just want to stay here and sparkle. They just don't want to go back in the bag. But you're going in the bag. Um, excellent. Okay. So they're ready. I now need to work out how to attach them. Back in a bit. I'm back. Um, <laughs> so another half an hour is gone. Um, right. So, rightly or wrongly, I've added some some of these crystal uh, bicones. Uh, opal. Yeah, it's definitely the right ones. So it's these. We absolutely beautiful. And it's interesting because I saw I saw a picture of somebody's. Um, a while ago and they looked kind of blue on one side so I honestly thought they might be blue on one side they're just reflecting the light um off of something they look a bit bl blue in strips but they're not they are completely clear uh right so the instructions say go through the crystal twice so that's fair enough because because when I've been attaching these I'm going through them in a cross so that they lay straight this way around these I want to be directional, so I don't want them to be, let me, um, I don't want them to lay like this, 
so straight like these beads I don't want them to lay straight like that I want them to lay at an angle um, because they're going round I'll just drop that one in the gap so I just need to go and find it hang on <laughs> goodness knows what treasures I'm going to find in the corner of that scroll frame when I roll it down um so so I want these to be at an angle and so I've actually done a half stitch and the instruction says to go through them twice um again in the um Chatelaine Facebook group somebody had said oh I go through two ply so I use two strands of the thread and I go through twice so I'm doing that so there is four strands of this invisible thread going through these cones they are pretty pretty solid they're not at all wobbly I'm not obviously gonna forcefully wobble them um so I've decided and everyone's gonna do different things and some of this is what you want like these beads I could have had at a half stitch sort of facing out this way you can do what you want do what you want um so I've done these corner ones I'm gonna call the the kind of the double ones corner the corners they are the corners you know what I mean uh, so I've done these so that the thread if I put a thread all the way through would go like this into the into the middle um and then I wasn't sure what to do with these and I didn't I was debating whether to have these so that the thread would go in the middle which means they would sit flat and straight like these like um like west to east I guess I guessed west to east um but I decided instead to have this corner facing into the middle and then I'm going to pick this right corner and face it into the middle there's no right or wrong here uh at all so I've got these two facing into the middle um this one facing into the middle and then I've changed the direction of this one to kind of come into the middle and I'm just going to put the camera up again sorry Oh, oh, it's heavy. Hang on. There we go. I've got these two coming into the middle. So I'm going to... What is that? Oh, that's the light, sorry. Um, So I'm just going to carry on going round and take you with me. And if there's any advice anyone who's watching this would like to provide me, I would be open to all of it um i did consider doing putting on the crystals afterwards because they will create a bit of extra hype that i have to sort of deal with when i move this um scroll frame when i move this the fabric up um but many people have done the crystals and beads now and then it's been fine later so i'm going with it and I also, like with a lot of these things, don't want to come back afterwards and do the crystals. But again, that is also an option that I've seen many people in the Facebook group say. And a couple of people on YouTube as well said the same thing. That they would um, happily do that. So, I'm just threading my needle. Because I haven't tied the thread to the needle... It is sometimes, like with normal cross stitching, you might need to sort of just adjust the thread that's on the needle because it'll be sort of one would have pulled through more than the other one. But I'm just going with this. Oops. I want this one, yeah, like now. There's a huge amount of thread on this half. Not that you can see. Um, but I'm going to have to pull, yeah, pull it so that there's two, two strands of the same. I might attach it to my needle next time, but I did consider doing that, but I just decided, yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. So I've got a bit of a knot somewhere. Where is the knot? There it is. Don't know what happened there, but... I got rid of it and then I'm going through again 
sorry, it's wobbly. And so at this point, it's a bit tricky to get in that bead. So oh, I'm kind of lifting it up a bit. And then you just have to sort of pull it really gently. I'm sure there's probably a much nicer, better, more efficient, fancier way of doing this. But that's my, that's my bead in. Yeah, I like it. All right, so I'm not going to travel. Uh, how many, how many stitches? One, two. I'm not going to travel 13 stitches without putting my needle. I can't find it. Putting my thread. <laughs> I'm not used to a scroll frame, so I'm not used to when you turn it over, it's like the top becomes the bottom. Uh, so I'm not going to travel for 13 stitches. Um, oh, and I'm going to cut the tail while I'm here. I don't think you can see me, sorry. Um, the tail that was at the end with the knot. So I'm just going to chop that off. And this is my little Alts pouch from uh, Joe Bird and it's got some really cool stuff in it I'm not moving that um that blue thread that you can sort of see looks bluey purple that is um that's the Nymo not the not the thread that's right at the top the thread that's sort of halfway down I can't show you because it's so tiny oh there you go you can see the shiny quite sick sick quite thick shiny thread there that I've just focused in on um, and then just lots of invisible thread because <laughs> I'm doing lots of exciting interesting stuff right so what was I, I cut the tail off now I'm going to travel what I'm not going to do is um, which I haven't seen anyone say either ever that they would I've seen people say that they don't travel more than I don't know five stitches or something but speeding surely you can't be stopping and starting all the time yeah this is i found the beading part quite quick i'm not sure how i don't know maybe it's because i'm talking i'm determined to finish this before i go and do anything else today and then i've got a lot to do today but i'm not i'm not I'm not coming back to this. I want it done. <laughs> oh, I can't see. I'm on the wrong side of the camera. No, I still can't see. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, I'm not getting very many beads in on one thread because I'm... I could, I suppose, pick a much longer thread, but it's a bit unwieldy, really. Anyway, as I was saying, if anyone has any, if any, does, does this look okay? Do you think this is okay? I would appreciate any, yes, this is fine, or oh, I'd probably do something different to you. <laughs> <laughs> any advice? Hugely welcome. Ooh. Something not right there. Something has happened. I don't know what that was. Can't see. Sorry, my hand. I need to get in that bead from under here, which is really awkward. Not bad. Yeah, they're well attached. They're well attached. Am I doing it in the right direction? Yeah. Um, so I bought some white and black felt. I'm going to use some white felt on this, I think, to, to help scroll it. Oh, that was a bit squeaky. go from here to here I'm going to be trying to put my arm all the way around it to get to the top of the bead that's going to be annoying okay so 
Oops. This is fun. It, I'm so I mentioned. I think in my last video, I think I mentioned Crafty Lisa, was somebody who um, I've been sort of rewatching her Chatelaine videos, and she said, she said while she was doing, I think it was doing some of the specialty stitches. She said, "Oh, I found myself holding my breath. I have found myself holding my breath doing this. It's really, it's really weird." concentration so this is a little net oh although it looks massive on the screen this is this little net that comes around this spool of this invisible thread and you know when you get something and you think oh that's cute and then you just don't think about it the moment I cut it off I thought I cut off the first thing I thought oh genius <laughs> genius you just put it back round and it keeps it all from not untangling. And actually the Nymo doesn't need that. The Nymo just sort of just sort of seems to stay where it is. But that this stuff needs this one needs it needs cane containing. Have I got enough thread for this? Let's find out. Okay, so I've got four left. Sorry, it's so badly out of focus when my hands come in. That one didn't quite, quite go to plan, but I it was okay. Got there in the end. No. What am I doing? No, I just went nuts on that one and I I just went over the top of it. I don't know what I was actually I know exactly what that was. I was thinking about something completely different. Let's try that again, shall we? Cool. It's alright. Excellent. Let's go top to bottom. So I'm changing the direction of this one. Um, after I've done this, I'm going to check what I've done for all of them to make sure they're all in the right direction. That'd be a bit annoying if they're not, but. So, so I'm just going to check that they're in the right direction. So these are pointing, this corner here is pointing this way. So they're okay. They're okay. So top right. Yep. Bottom right. Yeah. They're all facing the way that I want them to face. And I appreciate that then um, these two here at the bottom in the middle of the kind of double ones are facing different directions. I appreciate this one is facing, they're both facing in towards each other. I could easily have had though, had these kind of flat or 
Um, I suppose I could direct this facing up as well. Meh, I've gone for this. I quite like it. So I'll just tie off a second. So that means that part one and the centre motif is done. Yippee! <laughs> Uh, in a week. Um, oh my God, I don't know what date. I don't know what date it is. Twenty seventh. Yeah, and I started this on the twentieth. Did I? Yeah, it was last Sunday, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was Sunday. So that's a week of. I haven't stitched on anything else, mind. But that's a that's a week of working through it oh this has been it's been amazing um i do have a couple of questions should my eyelets have more eyes in them should this be tighter and then you should be able to see the holes more a bit like my diamond eyelets because i looked at somebody else's um piece and you can really see a massive hole in these so i'm just wondering if I should, you know, on the next round, I should, or whenever they come up again, um, try and make the holes as big as, not as big as possible, because that would be silly, but just far more noticeable than these. Um, do you think the beads or the beading of the crystals is okay? Mm, I think that's it. And if anyone's stitching this one and spots something that I've missed or I haven't done please say so. Um, down here I had a stitch that I hadn't done the top leg on <laughs> and then over here I missed that top stitch that I just forgot. So um, I'm happy if anyone says, ooh, are you sure about this bit? Um, please let me know. I'm up for that. So this is part one. I'm so excited. Um, I don't really know how much is on part two. I've purposefully tried to stay away from looking at it. Uh, I will have to move, well I won't have to, I might move the scroll frame or depending on how the pattern looks, I might start working on the right hand side or the left hand side. Obviously now I'm not going to be able to fit the whole thing in. I say obviously, but you can't really see that. So I'm just going to, that's where the top of the, the frame is. And that's where the bottom of the frame is. So there's not much room at all, um, top and bottom to do anything now. Obviously left and right is a different story. So I don't think I'll be working my way around and doing the same bit all the way around. Um, cause that would be moving this scroll frame up and down a lot and it's, it's not fun for me. So, um, <laughs> so I might just start on the side. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? I, I suppose I really would prefer to do like the same thing all the way around. That's not necessarily going to be possible unless I want to move my scroll frame regularly. See what happens. Uh, also, I'm very aware that I will not be finishing a part a week. That is not a thing that's going to happen. Um, and like with any of these things, oh, I was saying to Emma the other night that um, I do I do crochet. So on on a granny square, you start off um, in the middle and then you sort of work your way around. And at the beginning, you get loads and loads done because all the rounds are quite small. And then by the time you're, you know, as you move out, it just gets further. And, further and further for you to have to travel so it gets longer it takes more time so i'm a, i appreciate that um the bigger this gets it's just gonna take some time so yeah okay i'm just gonna keep staring at it otherwise i'm gonna go thanks everybody bye